Hello, Hamilton. It's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and start tackling your own to-do list. I'm Bob Asadori, and welcome to the new episode of the Just Ask Bob Show. Very special show today. We are going to be visiting an actual job site, so we're going to take you out of the studio and out into the job site, because I have no prop here today to handle this homeowner's question. Let's jump to the question here. Dear Bob, are metal ground spikes okay or sufficient in setting fence posts? Now, what about concrete that needs no mixing? The bag says just add water. Thank you so much, Bob. Mrs. Jones, Ancaster, Ontario. Well, Mrs. Jones, excellent question. Uh, we've dealt with many of these online, and I thought to myself here, this makes complete sense because we do have an actual job site that we can coordinate this show with. So we're gonna start in the studio, and we're gonna end up out on the job site. Now, one of Bob's bewares actually applies to today's show. New for season two, not only am I gonna tell you what to buy or what to get or how to do it, I'm gonna tell you what to steer clear of. Bob's bewares. We have a product here which Mrs. Jones made reference to in the email. Again, it's too much with um, making a mou making uh, mousing around about saving time and not having to use you know physical force and mixing. There's too many products out there which are outright garbage. They're junk. This particular product eliminates the need for a wheelbarrow, a mixing container. Uh, using strength, using a shovel. Simply what you do is you use your post hole auger or manual clamshell auger, you dig your hole, you take this bag, you cut it open, you dump a cup bag or two, depending on your depth, into the hole, and then you simply uh, predetermine the amount of water, the amount of liters, whatnot, it's on the bag. You add water on top of the dry mix, let the garden hose run or measure it, and then somehow, miraculously, this water soaks through and it solidifies the product, turning it into concrete. Now, I've cut these bags open in the past. There's no aggregate in there at all. So I don't know how they call it concrete when there's no aggregate. There's no stones in there. Either way, it's a piece of junk. We're going to show you on today's home, today's show, the right way to do it. Now, before we head out to the back, uh, let me also show you a Just Ask Bob top pick. This is a gem. I've been using these blades for years. For those of you that have reciprocating saws at home, you're gonna very, very much appreciate the quality of the Diablo blade. It's a phenomenal blade. It comes in various types of uh, teeth configuration. This one is six inch for wood, nail embedded. So if you're cutting down wood that has nails in it, this will work perfectly. They also have, again, different tooth configuration for if you're using it just on wood or if you're using it to actually cut up to quarter inch metal. So it's a terrific product. Asport by name at the Home Depot. Speaking of the Home Depot, big shout out, big thank you to the store, Craig Becker's store, the store on uh, Stone Church, Hamilton Mountain. They sponsor this show. Everything from <laughs> the Bob's Bewares to show you on today's show, the no good for nothing concrete fake mix, right to the real proper concrete, right to uh, fence and deck post spikes, props, drywall, you have it. Now we're gonna take a moment as well before we do get out onto the job site, I also wanna show you these metal spikes. Now these metal spikes again, they're a little bit of a problem because nobody wants to not only mix real concrete, but what people are trying to get out of, and it's not the people at all, it's the manufacturers. They get these, they plant these seeds in people's minds that they don't need a post hole digger. So essentially what you do is, you hammer this spike into the ground and then it has an end that receives a 4x4 post. Now they come in two configurations. One of them, the top is fixed. The other, the top rotates. Either way, both of them are going to be useless. In 10 years, I can't tell you how many fences I've gone out to repair that are leaning. The, the, the fence just comes apart. And please, don't ever set a deck on these. A lot of homeowners try to set their deck on this. Doesn't work. Now, from the studio, we're taking a quick break. The cameras are gonna follow us to a real live job site and we're gonna show you how to mix concrete the right way. See you in a bit. If you're thinking about buying a recumbent bike or start using the one you have, here's how you can get results. Adjust the seat to avoid any undue stress on your knees. This unique sitting position will give your abs an excellent workout. It will also support your back and make it easier to keep your balance. To help keep you moving and motivated, listen to some music, watch TV, or set it up at a window with a view. Well, until next time, keep fit and have fun. Body break. Body break.
Hello Hamilton, welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. On today's episode, we've taken the cameras out of my shop and we brought them here to a job site. First, a couple of thank yous. As you've met them in the past, my foreman Ryan Bello, Triple R's lead hand. Thanks Bob. Hey, thank Pleasure you for back being here. Show. Hello Hamilton. Second thanks to Triple R for allowing us to come to the job site to show off the work that we're doing here. And of course, a very big thank you to the Mr. and Mrs. for letting us bring the cameras to their property on one of our job sites. Now, in the past, on a previous show, we talked about using the post hole logger. The first step is boring the hole. Uh, that, I recall, was an email that had been submitted uh, regarding two and a half, three feet deep, something Mickey Mouse like that. And I'll tell you, if you've watched my show on post hole augering, you'll know what it takes to get that thing 48 inches into the ground, which is exactly what we have. Now, the post hole, the augering's finished. We've brought the machine back for the rental. We've got a sauna tube inside. Now, we've got a three, uh, four by four, which is actually three and a half inches by three and a half. Now again, here's where most homeowners and contractors will get it wrong. You don't just start throwing cement in there. You may be tempted to, but the problem is, you, this is your only chance to get it level in both directions. Now, as I like to say, the, the bubble doesn't lie. I mean, we're within very, very close. So it's level this way, and because of the fact that it's level this way, we've locked it into position. So if you can follow us down here, what I've done is I've taken a scrap 2 by 4 we screwed it into the post, we've brought it plumb, and when Ryan yelled plumb, I tied it in. So it's locked. Now, we've got one side left to do, and we waited, Hamilton, just for you. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, let me get it going here. Now, Ryan, you'll tell me when we're level the other way. Yep. Let me get it started. Now the first part, first part doesn't matter. You can put it anywhere. This is where we want to level it to. Oh, okay. Okay, now Ryan's gonna be assisting me. He's gonna tell me when the bubble's showing level or plumb, whatever way you want to look at it. Bubble is level. Oh, not anymore. Uh, there we go. Okay. These are the ground stakes. Very important. Now you can use scrap lumber. I mean, again, I, I have a business. I do this for a living, so I buy these. What I love about them is the holes are every inch apart. And if you notice, the holes also stagger as you rotate it. That's because no matter where I line it up, when it's staked into the ground, I can sink it in with a screw. But again, you could have used a two by four, but you'd have to saw the end of it in a V shape so you can spike it into the ground. Okay, so roughly I want to line it up here. Okay. Now Ryan, you tell me when it's good. We're good. We're good? Yep. Let me see. Nice, nice. Okay. Right about there. Nice. We're completely level and plumb across both directions. Now, this is important. If you want to focus in right down at the sauna tube, let me set this aside. Now, we have an 8 inch diameter sauna tube. We have a 4x4 four four that's 3.5 by 3.5. I'm pretty equal all the way around. That's very important. I've seen guys set the post all the way to the far left, all the way to the far, far left, far right, or front and back, and then in other words, you don't get concrete on one of the four sides. Now we're gonna have equal amount of concrete all around the post going down four feet. That's what's important. Now the fun begins. If you remember in the beginning of the show, Bob's Beware's. Uh, junk. They have, I mean, they have the concrete, it's not even concrete, it's some kind of a man-made concoction where you simply take the bag, you dump it all into the hole, predetermine the amount of water, pour it in the hole, leave it, walk away, go to bed, go make yourself dinner. That's no good. I would never ever construct a fence that way. The proper way to do it is we've got ready-to-use concrete mix, 
Now, although it says just add water, you still have to mix. This is real. Well, besides the grass in it, <laughs> this is real. This actually has aggregate in it. This is concrete that you'd use for setting posts, sidewalks, steps, floors, patios, or footings. The other stuff is just nonsense. Okay, grab my shovel. Let's dump some water in. More? A little more. Your water, easy. A little bit of water, mix, more water, mix. You take it easy. Now this is not for the faint of heart. It's very difficult, it's a lot of work. Now Ryan, you keep mixing, I'll explain a few things to the homeowners. Let's say you've got 10, 20, 30 posts to do, or let's say you're just very lazy or timid. You can call a concrete truck, they will come in, depending on the position of your backyard in relation to the front road. What they will do is they'll have the chute out, you take your wheelbarrow, you bring it to the front of the road, they will pour in the ready-made concrete. You bring your wheelbarrow to the back, boom, 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 you dump. Now, it's gonna cost you, but you're gonna have pretty well zero labor. M depending though, again, there is labor of moving the wheelbarrow back and forth. So again, it depends. On my jobs, if it's a small project, we mix by hand, this way. If it's a large project, I'll have the concrete trucked in. Now, really important too, that you've gotta get it out from the bottom. Let's do a full scoop so we show the bottom. See the white powder? You want everything mixed. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be working while you're on break. We'll be right back and we're gonna show you how to pour the concrete into the hole. the city of Hamilton. Did you know the city of Hamilton takes care of 300,000 trees along our city streets each year? They're actually hoping to add another 6,000 more and they're hoping that you'll be interested in a free tree. I had the opportunity to chat with the forestry supervisor Bill Longley about the process for interested residents. There's 40 varieties available. A resident will make three choices and from those three choices a forestry investigator will come and visit the site, speak with the homeowner and mark the location. Requests received before January 15th are generally planted in the spring. Requests received after June 5th, before June 15th are planted in the fall. There are so many benefits to having a tree on your property. Not only do they create oxygen through photosynthesis, filter harmful particulates from the air, and protect us from cancer-causing UV rays, but they also offer these fascinating benefits. They reduce the urban heat island effect, they intercept stormwater runoff during heavy rains, and they help keep your homes and your car's cool during summer months, which in turn reduces energy costs. They create a traffic calming effect. They help increase real estate values and generally make our streets more aesthetically pleasing. Since 2007, all of the trees planted in new developments are planted by the city. This is key to ensuring a wide variety. It is very important to maintain a diverse street tree population. We maintain a maximum of 20% of any one variety in a new de development because of invasive insects and disease populations that, that may, you know, overtake the, the neighborhood trees, so at least then we'll have some trees left. Within our city, most properties can accommodate one tree in the front yard and two on the sides, but there are cases within our more rural communities that can accommodate up to 10 trees per calendar year. You can order a tree online via the uh, treeshamilton.ca website. You can submit it via email at treeplanting at hamilton.ca. Mail in your brochure. When applying for a tree is this easy, who can pass it up? Once your application's been approved, you get a sign like this for your front lawn so that you can let neighbors, friends, and family know how to get a free tree too. For Inside the City of Hamilton, I'm Kat Cullen. <laughs>
This is Hamilton, the home of the outdoors. This is Hamilton, the home of sport. This is Hamilton, the home of history, the home of culture. This is Hamilton. Okay, welcome back Hamilton. Concrete's ready. Perfect consistency, it'll flow down nicely. Now, at this mo moment, it makes complete sense to talk about the post hole spike. You see the concrete, you remember the post, you know we're four feet deep. We are gonna have four feet inside of that sauna tube with real concrete. Now, this is the problem, the complete problem, just like the lady mentioned in the email. If we can take a moment to literally zoom in here, let me stake it down a little better. Sets posts in minutes, no concrete, no digging. This is nonsense. Believe me, you don't want this holding up your fence. Now, again, I have had situations where a homeowner will hire a contractor and the fencing contractor will put in miles and miles of fence. They're gonna put in it with this. It's gonna lean, it's gonna tilt. Homeowner gets upset at contractor. Contractor's simple answer is, well, hey, I found it at the Home Depot or Lowe's or Canadian Tire or wherever. That's not an adequate answer. I mean, this contractor they hired probably doesn't have his master building repair license because he'd know better. These are ridiculous toys, and this becomes an issue of politics about American products getting their way into Canada, Chinese products, who knows. You have to check local building code and you have to use your common sense as a homeowner. It's very, very important. So again, one of Bob's bewares. Nothing but a piece of junk. We'll toss that over. Okay, now we're gonna start filling. Ryan, wanna start with a couple of shovels? Yep. Well, you're welcome. How many is that? That's three now. Okay, we'll stop at three. Now you're probably wondering why we stopped at three. Now again, it, it, this could take 15 to 20 shovels full. But if you start just throwing it and throwing it in, maybe at 10 you're gonna start to get to the top. Now I've talked about this before, and this, in this case it makes complete sense. If you don't have penetration, you have nothing. You have to get it right to the bottom, you have to get it packed, and you have to keep adding from there. So every few shovelfuls, you wanna use some type of uh, long tool, and you wanna get in, and you wanna tamp. So I can see it right here, all the concrete's built up against this side, it's not managing to get its way down. So we're gonna tamp it, and keep on tamping it, all four sides. Always checking the level as well. Yes, always keep checking your level on both sides so you don't, you don't distort it. Now it's dropped down. All right, Ryan, Fill a couple up. more. Some more, yep. Okay, let's check both sides. Yeah. Now a lot of times if you find you're going a little bit off, you can play with it. I want it nice and level. Perfect. Okay, we'll keep filling. Alrighty.
Okay, let me get in again. Yeah. Thank you. And please, if you're doing this at home, don't use a rake. <laughs> My tools are everywhere, job to job. Just make sure it doesn't hit you in the face. I should keep it that way. But again, it works. Any type of uh, long instrument. It's all about the penetration. See, if you don't do this, you're gonna have a foot of concrete, three, four inches of air. Six inches of concrete, three, four inches of air. It's gonna saddle, water will get in, your fence is gonna start going every way but straight. All four sides. Okay, Ryan. Yep. Maybe even just another shovel. very important if you'll notice exactly where we stop the concrete I can't stand this but you see on a lot of jobs they bring the concrete up to here in a big mound that's gonna get picked up in the temperature change in the frost that's gonna heave and end up pulling the concrete up so you want to stay about a couple inches below grade a couple of inches below grade and then you fill in your topsoil your grass again and you're completely fine. Now we're gonna check once more for level on both directions. <coughs> That's about as perfect as you can get. The other side's the same. The stakes must stay in place for at least 24 hours. Again, these are temporary, they're gonna get removed. And of course, depending on the size of your home, the size of your property, this could only be one out of 50, one out of 60, or one out of 20. Doesn't make a difference. Now, very important to let homeowners know, I mean, this is television. We have to speed things up. We don't maybe follow procedure quite the exact way. Check building code, check our website. You can fast forward, you can rewind, you can pause. You can literally sit down and take it at your own pace and watch each and every step. Easiest website to remember www.justaskbob.com just like the show justaskbob.com visit the website watch the show again watch our past show where we use the auger we're here for you Hamilton send us emails send us submissions we have a contest running via Facebook so into the search engine just type in just ask Bob visit our Facebook page we want details I don't I'm not gonna even respond to those little quick posts about some type of job or rental I want the gory gossip. Is the husband out golfing? Is he a remote control addict? What is the reason nobody's getting up and off the couch and tackling the to-do list? Send us a submission, lots of pictures please. Send us photographs. We're gonna pick a winner. I'm gonna show up in your home and start chipping away at your to-do list with you. And we'll maybe bring Ryan with us as well. Say hello, Ryan. Hello, Hamilton. <laughs> We're gonna have fun with it. Send us the submissions and keep on tuning in. Thanks again, see you next time.